I just got back from watching Kimberly Akimbo for the first time ever here on Broadway and I got really lucky with this one. So I actually won the lottery for the show. It's the first Broadway lottery I've ever entered and I won it straight away, beginner's luck I guess. And I'm so glad I did because it meant that when I went to the show, I found out I was sitting front row. So I was tucked right into the corner. So it wasn't the best front row seat that I could have possibly imagined, but it's still, it's front row. Like I'm not gonna complain about that, right? So that was incredible. And it also meant that I paid, I think it was $50 for the seat as opposed to paying 80, 90, 100 or over that, which seems to be the norm for a lot of shows on Broadway. I think the average Broadway ticket price is something like $120. And so anytime I'm able to pay 50 or something like that, even though that's more than I would often typically pay in the UK, uh, it still feels like a treat to me so that was cool but i i watched the show and had a, a surprising kind of viewpoint on it when I, I got to the end of it and we'll, we'll talk through why that's the case but in short i went into the show not having seen any kind of uh, slime tutorials not having listened to the cast album not having basically spoiled myself on aspects of the show. Like I went in more or less blind. And the only thing I did know was that it was about a girl who was younger than she actually looked. Like she looked more old. That was all I knew. And I think because of the fact that I, I knew that the show had won a bunch of awards and I knew that it had been nominated for a bunch of stuff. And just in general, there'd been a lot of fan hype and, and excitement around the show. I didn't go in with expectations based on material that I'd consumed, but I still went in with some expectations. And I don't want to say that they weren't met necessarily, but I was surprised by what I got, I suppose. So we'll talk through it, like I said. I think if I had to liken this show to another show, it would be like a Eugenius or maybe a Be More Chill. And I'm not just saying that because of the sort of like school-y aspects of things. But just in general, there's aspects of those shows that are so fun, right? Like they are so much fun, but the plot of those shows isn't the thing that I'm coming back to them for again and again. Like for me, sure, it's fine, but the plot is almost a kind of a path towards good songs or a path through good songs as opposed to something that is really consistently captivating me. And Kimberly Akimbo kind of ended up in that direction. Like it's a show that by all accounts could have been a real tearjerker, could have been something that really made me weep potentially. And it has so much, so much ammunition, I suppose, in its arsenal that it could use to, to achieve that effect. And yet I didn't really feel particularly strongly or as strongly as I thought I was going to. And that's okay. Like I don't have to cry when I go to the theater or something, but I would have liked to feel a little bit more emotionally wrapped up in it, I think. And certain moments made me go, oh, but that was kind of the extent of it. And uh, th that surprised me. Maybe I'm emotionally numb now that I've seen Next to Normal in the UK, because <laughs> I just saw that on the West End before I before I came out here when I was in the Donmar. But yeah, it just, it didn't resonate with me in the way that I thought it was going to. Uh, that said, there was a huge amount that I loved, starting with Justin Cooley. Justin plays a character who's extremely, I guess, introverted. I mean, he plays the tuba, need you say more? And he's very awkward. And I think that the implication or, or certainly a reasonable assumption is that he may be on the spectrum or, or something, right? And Justin plays the role so well, unbelievably well. And with with so much compassion for the character and the other characters in the show. And it's 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 such a delicate performance and uh, stole the show for me. I thought that Justin was a uh, tour de force, really just phenomenal and so funny and such perfect comedic timing. And and the, the root of much of the emotion of the show, despite being adjacent to where the root of much of the emotion would be expected to be, I guess, if you explained to someone what the plot was, I, I just really thought that Justin carried the show in many ways and, and, and was incredible. So I, I wanna give him his props because he really deserves that. I also really, really want to call out a moment of sheer genius from the cast in the second act because there's basically a moment where Kimberly is in hospital and her parents need to make space in their house for a crib that their new baby that's on the way shortly 
uh, is going to occupy. And so they move Kimberly's bed out of her bedroom. They replace it with a crib. And what's supposed to happen there is a wall is supposed to close and that's the closing of Kimberly's bedroom. And you're meant to be left in just the front room so that the back of the stage can open up and you can see the kitchen area where the mum is gonna be. So the dad is sort of standing in center stage right now. And he goes from the bedroom and he turns to the back of the stage where the mum is supposed to be once the doors open up and you can see that part of the area and it doesn't open. And he completely held his composure. He didn't break for a second. He just stood there. And then I'm pretty sure he improved a line that was something like, he, he was like, honey, uh, y y did you get lost in the house or something? And it just didn't open. And he really just held his nerve and he stayed there. And finally, after maybe 30 seconds, and she, I think, called out a line from, from the back, it opened up and they then riffed with just a little bit of improv. And that must've been so scary, right? But they were so brave in the way that they proceeded with without missing a single beat and without breaking at all. And there was there was a line that, that he said, that was just total genius because they'd just moved into that house recently, right? Like in the show, the idea is that it's a new house for them. They've moved from Lodi, I guess, wherever that is. And so they're also playing this quite dysfunctional couple that's meant to sort of bicker quite a bit and and natter and, and kind of tread on each other's toes almost. So the mom said something about how, oh, like, how come you couldn't find me? You couldn't find your way around or something. And he was like, well, it's a new house. So you can't expect me to have the lay of the land yet figured out sort of thing. It was, he delivered it so well. And it was, it was just genius, like such incredible, improvisation in so few lines. It just, it was really amazing stuff. And I wanted to give him props for that because I thought he did, I mean, both the mom and the dad, fantastic. So that was great. Another thing I really enjoyed is, is the cast of four schoolmates that Kimberly has. They act kind of as almost a Greek chorus for the show, some description, or at least a backup dancers and a backup barbershop quartet and all, all, all sorts. They just add kind of uh, color and flavor and harmony, etc., to uh, a whole bunch of scenes in the show. And all of them were fantastic, first of all, but also I just really enjoyed the way that they were written and included in that way. Uh, a lot of the jokes between them really landed. The audience thought it was really funny. And that was fortunate, I think, because again, when you're writing a musical, you're creating a musical and you're writing it about kids, I think it's easy to miss the sorts of jokes that kids would make and the sorts of things that would actually be realistic. You can write a joke that is gonna land for a 50 year old, but it's not gonna be realistic at all. And this show managed to avoid that, I think in many ways. And part of, I think how it did that is the fact that it's set in, I don't know, sometime in the eighties maybe. So it gives them a little bit more freedom maybe to, to make slightly more dated references. But on the whole, I thought that the inclusion of that, that little cast was really great, but it was a bit of a double-edged sword because it meant that many of the songs in the show were are not solo songs. Many of them are duos or they're with these extra four people coming in and singing extra parts. And I loved that, like it, sonically it was great, but it did mean that I walked out at the end and I was kind of wondering what's the shower song for this musical. And that's something that I think about quite a bit because most musicals that are contemporary musicals coming out today have at least one shower song. Like Be More Chill, as much as many people are not fans of it and other people are complete rabid fans of it. I think they'd all agree that Michael in the Bathroom is a banger. It is an objective banger. And maybe you're not super into Newsies, but maybe you agree that Santa Fe is a banger. Like even if you're not so much of a ballet person or whatever, Santa Fe just slaps, right? The list is, is infinite really. All of these songs, Dear Evan Hansen, full of bangers. And I don't know what it is for this. I, I, I feel like there were a lot of really great songs but not necessarily that solo, I'm gonna be singing this forever, like I'm gonna walk out of the theater whistling it, like that sort of stuff. And maybe I just need to listen back to the soundtrack and, and give it another shot, but it felt just a little bit like that was missing through the show for me. Uh, and also something I've just remembered that was so funny. So I've never seen what they're called lantern bugs before. They're apparently an invasive species. I was talking to the people next to me, they were really nice. Uh, and they told me that they're invasive and you're you're meant to sort of squash them if you see them or something but i'd never seen them before the show right and there was this one lantern bug and it walked all the way it walked okay it genuinely went for a leisurely stroll from all the way on stage right across the very edge of the stage all the way to stage left where i was sitting and then all the way back again about 10 minutes later just walking didn't fly away like those things 
they jump at you as well. Like they're very much the sort of bug that will just get up in your space and they're really annoying for that. Like it happened to me earlier today while I was walking to this park. One just flew and landed on me and I was like, gah, get off. It just walked. <laughs> it was so weird. So that was that was an amusing sort of twist of the situation as well. So overall for Kimberly, I had a really good time. It's a show that I want to see again and I want to see it again, ideally from a different position in the theater probably so that I can just sort of appreciate it with a fresh angle, fresh perspective. But it wasn't the five star kind of banger that I was expecting it to be. It was a very good show. I enjoyed it a lot. I think it probably lands in four star territory for me. I think that I could watch it again and I could be like, yeah, it's a definite four. Or I might watch it again and be like, oh, maybe without Justin Cooley, like maybe it's a three. Or maybe once the jokes are only landing for a second time as opposed to being super fresh and being like really incredible in that sense, maybe it's a three. So it's not to say don't go and see it. I really implore you to go see it. I think it's wonderful, but it's just not as, as big and bombastic and, and life-changing as I was maybe led to believe by much of the hype surrounding the show. What it sets out to do, maybe this is the, the best way to put it, what it sets out to do, it nails. Every single thing it sets out to do, it nails. It's just the extra credit that it doesn't necessarily aspire to in the first place. It doesn't check those boxes necessarily. And that extra credit is what, for me, puts shows in five-star territory. So for me, it's for had a really good time. We'll try and see it again before I go back. Uh, the staff there are really lovely too. Spoke to a couple of them in the lobby and stuff like that and, and hope I can continue those conversations when I'm next there. And yeah, I, I enjoyed the show a lot, but it had a few quirks that I was like, oh, okay. Interesting. This plot has kind of just happened in the same way that the plot of Dear Evan Hansen just kind of happens, actually, now that I think about it. Like, I don't feel mega attached to the characters in Dear Evan. This was a similar deal. But still, really great show. Four stars.